Today on RPG Horror Stories, we have two DMs in two separate stories that showed favoritism and then freaked out when their players explained why such behavior is unsavory. Without further ado, let's get started. Today on RPG Horror Stories, we have two DMs in two separate stories that showed favoritism and then freaked out when their players explained why such behavior is unsavory. Without further ado, let's get started. Kind of a classic story. Players express genuine concern over an issue. DM throws a tantrum. Longish post ahead. So, a little while back, a player from my campaign reached out to ask if I wanted to join his new homebrew campaign. As expected, the elevator pitch was tempting, so I took up his offer. The first session took place about a week later. The first red flag was the DM's insertion of an incredibly overpowered NPC into the campaign. This NPC threatened us into going about this particular quest, and after the fact, the DM smugly showed us this NPC's character sheet to boast about how powerful she was. Her strength stat was... 30? Aside from that, I didn't enjoy the session at all. The DM played favorites and ignored my character the entire session, apart from once where we had a brief interaction with a merchant. Though I attempted to assert myself on several occasions, I was constantly talked over, and the DM did not make an effort to prevent this. I figured that, as this was the first session, I'd give the DM and the campaign the benefit of the doubt, and stick it out for another session. Bad mistake. Session 2 swings around and we proceed along the main questline to the Sunless Citadel. As the other players were excluding my character from their discussions and making decisions on his behalf, he had no idea what was going on. I attempted to facilitate interactions or to get in on puzzles, but again, I am either talked over or ignored. The DM blatantly continues to play favorites. I decide it's not worth it and remain silent. The only interaction my character gets is when another player shows up late and acknowledges my existence. The session left an extremely sour taste in my mouth, and I decided to bring it up to the DM. I reached out with, hey, thank you for the session. Unfortunately, did not enjoy myself as I felt like I was excluded and ignored at times. I thought perhaps that, as he was my friend, he would take my concerns into consideration. If he was a good DM, he'd take your concerns into consideration. Nope, he blew up, insisting he gave me things to do the entire session. That was incorrect. Not once did he even address my character, nor did the other players accommodate me. He began to blame shift, claiming when your character is extremely meek and quiet, you can't blame the DM when the spotlight isn't on them. Fair enough, I said, but I did not want the spotlight on me. I just wanted to be acknowledged. I stood my ground and said I tried to assert myself in the game, and the DM lost it and started playing the victim. He said it was my fault the game didn't go well, and that he felt he was doing a horrible job, that he had to swallow his throat and carry on. I wondered if perhaps I was in the wrong and apologized. He insisted the dynamics with my character didn't work, and that's kinda when I decided to leave the campaign entirely. It's only after sharing the story with a few pals that I realized the DM was in the wrong. Rather than having a meltdown and levy blame on the player, he should have listened to my concerns. I might have needed to be more engaged somehow, but I feel a more amicable solution could have been reached if he had just been more open-minded. In retrospect, I think he was on a massive ego trip, if that wasn't obvious by the overpowered NPC with 30 strength. Now, obviously the DM NPC is really bad. Don't have an NPC that overshadows the player characters. Remember, they are the main characters. You can have powerful NPCs in your world. That is something that's going to be in every D&D game. However, those NPCs can't overshadow the party. It just shouldn't happen. You shouldn't have a crazy, heroic NPC that's doing all the work for the players. And you definitely, definitely shouldn't be bragging about it, as this DM did. Now, the main focus of the story is the meltdown and the favoritism. 
Favoritism is never good in a game. Even if a player is quiet, that is most likely the reason that the DM acted like this. However, you shouldn't ignore quiet players. You should try to bring them into the spotlight instead. Now, of course, you can't force them to roleplay or to engage. However, there are many ways that you can invite people to engage in the story in a more friendly and passive way than just shoving them out there. In the description, I've linked a video by Ginny D with 10 tips on how to do this. It's a really, really good one. Obviously did not handle this entire situation well. Taking criticism like that is completely inappropriate in all areas in life. If you freak out every single time someone criticizes you, I'm telling you, you're not just gonna have a bad D&D game, you're just gonna have a bad life. People are going to criticize because you are going to do things wrong. We'll get more into that principle in the next story. All right, round two. Once upon a time, a friend of mine from college asked me if I was interested in the homebrew campaign he was getting together. We had played together a few times before, once with him as DM for one shot, and he had done a fantastic job, so I said yes. He asked me to invite other friends as well. I invited some friends, but the only one who was interested was a guy we'll call Arthur, or Art. Art was a couple years older than me, going to college after just finishing a contract in the army. He had never played D&D before, but said it sounded like fun and he wanted to give it a try. He was really well built and into fitness and was really friendly and knew how to have a good time. Art is the kind of guy who does everything 100%, so when he agreed to be a part of the campaign, he started reading through the player's handbook and watching videos to learn everything he could about being a good player. First session arrives. We meet at the DM's place and everyone introduces themselves. The other players are a friend of the DM, Bob, and a friend of Bob's, Jenny. DM obviously has eyes for Jen. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the whole reason he invited Bob. DM pays special attention to Jen and her pyromancer sorcerer character while neglecting Art, who is completely new, playing a human fighter. The OP says lol of course, but hey, nothing wrong with a human fighter. As the session goes on, DM introduces several NPCs that all say creepy things toward Jen, and she politely turns them down each time. Meanwhile, both in-game and out, she starts to flirt with Art. After a while, it's pretty obvious they are interested in each other, which causes DM to start targeting Art. He refuses to help whenever Art asks a question or any time he attempts to do something cool. Enemies always seem to go after our fighter, as well as get random buffs, but the party works together and Art doesn't die. At one point, the DM flat out told Jen that there is no way her character would be interested in Art because his charisma and intelligence were both really low. To this day, I still remember the way she looked over at Art and told the DM, well, Maybe my character just likes big, strong, dumb guys. That was the final straw. Next session was a dungeon crawl, and it is filled to the brim with traps and monsters. Of course, most of the attacks and traps required either intelligence or charisma saving throws. He repeatedly tried to get Art's character charmed. I'm guessing so he could either make him attack Jen or have him do something NSFW with some of the monsters while she watched. Finally, we find the dungeon boss, who is some kind of homebrew buffed succubus with a few minions. Near the end of the fight, everyone is at their limit. Bob is making death saving throws. My cleric and Jen's sorcerer are both out of spell slots. Art has guidance, so he can make that wisdom saving throw, but he is one or two hits away from going down. Art has the sentinel feet, so thus far the succubus has stayed far out of his reach. After another failed charm attempt, the succubus moves right in front of Art. Naturally, Art moves to roll some dice for his attack, but the DM stops him and says, I only moved 29 feet, so I'm 6 feet away. Art gives him a look and asks, Are you sure you want to do this? DM pretends like he didn't say anything. It's my turn next, then Arts. I'm completely fed up with the DM's antics, so I announce that my cleric will be dashing to move within 5 feet behind the enemy to flank it. 
Art goes next, says he's going to attack and starts rolling dice. He gets enough to hit, then the DM says that his attack misses because he's still 6 feet away. Art is visibly angry at this point, but calmly says, I take one step forward and make my second attack. He rolls twice, and the second roll is a crit. He then action surges and makes two more attacks, both of them hitting. After adding up all the damage from various bonuses, the DM gets visibly teary-eyed. Then says that everyone in five feet has to make a dexterity saving throw. I fail the save and my character takes a huge amount of force damage, which not only knocks him out, but instantly kills him due to massive damage rules. Art makes the save. He is out on the ground, but the fight is over. Because I guess succubi randomly explode when they die? Jen's character immediately runs over and heals him with potion. DM told us that the session was over. I think there was some half-hearted goodbyes at that point, but everyone left pretty quickly, and we all knew none of us were coming back. Fortunately, Art decided to give D&D another chance. He and Jen found another group to join, and they still play together, the last I heard. I haven't spoken to my former friend, the DM, since, so I have no idea what happened with him but I hope he's grown and he is doing okay these days. Okay, so obviously this DM is not incredible. This is a different type of favoritism entirely, something that goes beyond gameplay. It's outside of game influence. Now, most people don't use D&D to hit on their crush. Don't do that, by the way. I feel like that goes without saying. However, this does have application in your own games. You are inevitably going to be playing with people you know and people you don't know at the same time. You can't let the relationship you have with players you already know get in the way of the fact that you, the DM, need to engage everyone at the table. That is incredibly, incredibly important. Also, when things don't go your way in-game or out-of-game, in this case, out of game when it comes to the DM's little creepy crush, you can't freak out about it. This is the same principle as last time. When you are unable to take criticism, you're going to have a rough life, and lashing out at new players with overpowered monsters and targeted attacks is incredibly stupid and immature. So I'm pretty sure all of you already know this, but don't do that. With that being said, I think that's going to wrap up this episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do hit that like button. If you want to see more episodes of this series and my other series, Tabletop Tavern Tips, then please do hit that subscribe button. And if you want to leave your thoughts or your own stories, then go down to the comments down below. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.